Hello everyone, this is Gabriel Shida. I'm one of the producers for The Territory. And today we're together with Chai Surui, uh, our brilliant executive producer, and Alex Fritz, uh, the director of the film. And I know we don't have much time, so I'll try to be short because uh, we, we want to listen from them. So I'll start with Chai. And I'm sorry, because uh, uh, we were going to speak Portuguese. You're going to listen in English, but I'll talk to her in Portuguese. Chai, uh, você sempre fala que a Amazônia é o centro do mundo. You always say that the Amazon is the center of the world. Why do you think the Amazon is the center of the world? Hi, everyone. Hi. Chai, Suri, it's a pleasure to be here talking to you today. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you for moderating. It is a pleasure to be here with you. So why is the Amazon the center of the world? All of the biomes throughout the world are as important as the Amazon, but none are more important than it. Without the Amazon, we don't have life. If we lose the Amazon, we will lose our planet. That's why it is so important. When we talk about climate change, it's so important. This is why it's so central, for good or for bad. The Amazon has this power. It has the power to help. It's like the world's air conditioner. It cleans the air. It cools us down. And if we lose the Amazon, we'll hit a point where our planet, there's no way back for our planet. And we're, we're actually almost there. That's why I consider it the center of the world. Without it, we won't have life. And what happens to the Amazon will affect everybody throughout the world. Thank you very much, Chai. Uh, Alex, Alex uh, you were an American person. You were, you were born and raised in Ithaca and you're based in New York now, right? And, and so you're an American citizen. And uh, as far as as far as I remember, <laughs> was your first time in Brazil uh, in 2018. So how and why did you decide to go to Brazil and tell this story about the Amazon? Um, you know, I, I'm American. I, I hadn't been to Brazil before uh, embarking on this first trip. And I, I was just really moved by Nadinha, the activist in our film, and her persistent fight for the rights of other people, for the rights of the forest to remain standing. And she was engaging in this in an area where she was surrounded by people who didn't believe in her, uh, who were fighting against her. And, and she was doing this proudly, vocally, uh, you know, unafraid, unashamed of what she stood for. And, you know, I, I felt it was very hard not to be moved by that. And, and so I reached out to her and then uh, was, was then connected to this amazing producer, Gabriel Ushida. Um, and, you know, I think uh, it's a filmmaker's job to, to go out and try to create connections between an audience and, and another community that maybe they're not part of and, and create a way, an empathy bridge for people to be able to understand what other people in different parts of the world are going through. And uh, I hope that's what our film is, is able to do for, for people when, when it comes to the Amazon. Thanks, Alex. And another question for you, actually. So you spent, you spent the last three years uh, traveling to the Amazon and you spent a lot of time in the Amazon. You, you spent several weeks in the, in the Amazon. And by now, I, I imagine that you know much more than even than lots of Brazilians, and not only Americans and outsiders. So by now, uh, did your idea after all of this traveling, did your idea or impression about the Amazon change? What did you learn there? Yeah, great question. Um, the Amazon is a, a beautiful, beautiful ecosystem, and it's just so full of life. You know, I think a lot of the time people think about the Amazon as 
uh, trees and just a forest. Um, but there's so much more in it than, than just trees. There's, there's all types of animals and insects and uh, a lot of people that, that call that forest their home as well. Um, you know, indigenous groups, as well as some indigenous groups that are still isolated, that choose to remain in voluntary isolation from the rest of Brazilian society in the state. Um, and, and so it's a really important resource uh, for, for so many different reasons. You know, I think every two days they discover a new species in the Amazon rainforest, and they're not even looking that hard. So you think about all of the unknown unknowns that are out there in the forest, all this wonderful life um, and possibility and and then you think about its destruction and uh yeah it's it's a a really beautiful ecosystem and i i hope everybody's able to experience it through the film and, and the sound design and, and everything that we do to help transport you there thank you now my next next question is for chai so i'm speaking to portuguese chai how can people help you? We've seen deforestation, we've seen forest fires that have been intentionally set. They say this is the last generation that can save the Amazon. What can we actually do to save the Amazon? Thanks for the question. So, how can people help? That's not an easy question. I hope if it were so simple, I think we would have been able to change, change the situation quicker. But people are not aware of what's going on in the Amazon. And this holds for people outside Brazil and it holds for Brazilians as well. Many people don't have the insight that the native Brazilians have, they don't understand, they don't have that vision or that viewpoint. So how can people help this essential place? How can we save what we have right now? We're already suffering the consequences of past destruction. One, we're trying to pull things back, turn things around, and we try to show this. This is the struggle of the indigenous people. So supporting our struggle, supporting our organizations, our leadership, and our associations. And we're doing this wonderful work. So if you can support us, that's a great first step. I recommend that you go to our website for our impact campaign. It's the territoryimpact.org. I think that's it. We'll post it later. The other important thing is that people listen, listen to indigenous voices. They have to see what we're doing, see what our work, follow our organizations. Be aware, know what we're doing. People have to understand what's happening in the Amazon. Yes, the government is responsible, or the disgovernment, I would say, is culpable. And this actually shows how a an administration can actually destroy a country and destroy our territory. We've seen our laws ignored, oversight thrown by the wayside, but it's much more than what the government is doing. And other countries are also at fault because the the flooring, the woods that are, end up being people's floors and our houses, it's illegal. Of course, it says that there's some sort of conservation percentage, but that's not true. Or perhaps the legal cattle the, that is legally sold, so-called legally sold to France, it's not necessarily legal. So people need to be aware of this and people need to co complain 
they have to be aware of the products that they're buying and they have to insist on fair trade this is a way also this is also a way to share uh, help the amazon thank you so much chai now thinking like visually because our friends from global inheritance they are going to produce posters about this whole story and, and i'm super excited about that so now that you you got to know the amazon much more than you did before so if you had to 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 pick to choose one image to represent the amazon reports nowadays what would that be mm. oh my gosh um you know i think it's uh it'll be beautiful to see everybody bringing their own interpretation to this um and i think that will be where we start to see some some really important conversations happening is is new art new images being created um images that include indigenous people images that center indigenous voices as chai was saying um you know not as uh passers-by or, or victims of climate change but indigenous voices as the best solutions we have to deal with this crisis um, listening to that wisdom and that knowledge and you know i think Film is a, an art form, uh, you know, painting, visual arts are an art form, translation is an art form. Um, and, and we need all of the power of the arts to come together um, in service of the rainforest, in service of these important conversations. So I'm just so excited to see what comes from, from everybody else's imagination in this, uh, the Posted Studio campaign. Thanks. Chai, a mesma, a mesma pergunta para você. Se você tivesse que escolher uma imagem. Same question for you. If you could choose an image that represents the Amazon today, or the state of the Amazon today, what image would you choose? That's difficult. People need to understand not just the Amazon, but the indigenous people. People think that the indigenous people are one single monolithic unit. We have 305 different indigenous groups. There are just 52 different groups where we filmed the territory. It's where we have the greatest number of indigenous groups in Brazil. So how can we choose one single image for something that is so rich and diverse? It's the largest forest that has the greatest biodiversity of any forest on earth there is no single image that represents this but i think i would probably choose a chameleon because a chameleon can change or perhaps a panther that fights or maybe perhaps a, a type of bird Different a mutum bird and an arara bird. They're two different types of birds that represent the yeah, Amazon yeah. rainforest. Thank you so much, Chai. We talked about the Impact Campaign's website. There is a big network of indigenous people working with you on the territoryimpact.org. Can you talk about the different groups that are working on this impact campaign? or the art, uh, artist collectives, or the photographers. Who are these people that the world should be familiar with? There's something beautiful about what we're doing. Our film is much more than just a film. It is an instrument for change in every sense of the word. This means strengthening not just the Uruwawawal people, but strengthening many indigenous people, strengthening other organizations and other communicators. We have great organizations working with us. We've got one that is the largest representative of all the indigenous people in Brazil. We've got Acarindé. These are organizations that we wouldn't we would never have been able to do our work without their support media india which is a collective of communicators set up 
and supported and run by indigenous people in Brazil. We've got Amazonia Brasileira, other organizations. There are organizations, in, international organizations that also support us. There's one organization that works with all of the Amazon in all of the different countries where you find the Amazon. We indigenous people are, we are all over the place. We're communicators, we are artists. We're filmmakers as well. We are everywhere. So I think there's a lot that people need to know about and people should follow us. Thank you so much, Chai. By your side, you're also filming. So, but by your side, you also had Tangan, Uruguayal, Coimbu, Uruguayal, Bitete, Uruguayal, a list of other indigenous cinematographers. Uh, some of them, they were uh, like very young. Most of them, they were very young uh, and they were also like in a very initial stage of filming, but others, they were already filming for, for some time. And we know that there's, there's a huge language and cultural barrier from the US and the Uruguay territory. I'd like to know from you, what did you learn from these uh, indigenous filmmakers? Great question. Um, you know, it started out where I thought I was going to come in and uh, I was going to teach what I knew about cinematography to Tangai and the other members of the community who were picking up the cameras and, and joining us in, in making this film. Um, and it ended up really being kind of the other way around in, in many respects. You know, the footage that I had shot of surveillance missions or, or things like that just straight up wasn't as good as the way that they shot it. Um, and that's because it came from this first person perspective, something I could never have, uh, you know, having not lived as an indigenous person. Um, and so when I, we saw the footage that was coming from, from these guys as they were filming these surveillance missions and arresting an armed invader on their territory, um, I think the, the immediacy and, and the direct nature of their cinematography uh, conveyed the same urgency and chaos and, um, you know, immediacy that I felt when I was out there on these surveillance missions, but I, I was kind of incapable of conveying it in the same way that they did. Um, yeah, so, so I, I think I learned a lot as well about decision making and, and how uh, decisions get made within the Uruguay community, which is a consensus based community in order to make any decision within the Uruguay, wow, you have to have representatives from each of the six villages come together, sit in person, discuss, and sometimes it takes a couple hours, sometimes it takes a day or two or three to make a decision. And that's a slow process when you're trying to make a film where you want to be decisive and quick and move quickly and ah, let's go do stuff. Film, you know, can be very hierarchical where you have a director and a producer making decisions and other people carrying them out. Uh, and I think I learned a lot from working with Yuru Wow about the, the power of consensus and having everybody unanimously on board and pulling in the same direction behind the same idea. Uh, because then when things do get really difficult later on, having that trust and that mutual understanding that everybody is behind this means that you don't have to have those same conversations um, in, in those really tense moments. Okay, so my last question, because now, uh... We want to see what our friends from Global Inheritance are going to produce about this whole conversation and the film. So, Alex, can you tell us uh, when and where can people watch the film? Like, what's the next step? How we can we can see that? Absolutely. Yes. The film is opening in theaters August 19th, um, and it's going to be in theaters across the United States, uh, around 100 cities or so. So, uh, you know, wherever there's a movie theater, we hope to be there. Tell your friends, tell your family and help us spread the word about this film. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Global Heritage. <laughs> we're looking forward to, to see the posters. It, we're super excited to see that. Chai, you have a last message, short one. <laughs> Eu quero todo mundo nos cinemas, vendo I want you all at the theaters. I want everyone to, to go, to spread out, to call your friends, to bring friends. I want masses, masses of people. Talk about, talk about the Amazon. Let's discuss the Amazon and the indigenous people. 
So we want we want it to be just a mass movement. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. For, thank you all for watching it. And we're looking forward to, to see these posters. We're looking forward to work together maybe and, and to see what's what you guys are producing. Thank you.